After the initial steps, this baby was assessed and required positive pressure ventilation. Bag mass ventilation has been moving the chest, but the heart rate is not increasing. So we have a 36-weeker that was born floppy and apneic. We have been moving the chest with ventilation, correct? Yes, we've been moving the chest for about 30 seconds now. Okay. The heart rate is still not coming up, and we've already tried our corrective measures with Mr. Sofa. I think it's time to get an alternate airway. Does everyone agree? Agree. Yeah. Yeah. An alternate airway may either be an endotracheal tube or a laryngeal mask airway. Everyone involved in the care of newborns should know the basic equipment, supplies, and measurements needed to successfully place an alternate airway. The correct endotracheal tube size is based on weight of the baby. 2.5 for less than 1,000 grams, 3.0 for 1,000 to 2,000 grams, and a 3.5 tube for greater than 2,000 grams. Of note, the LMA for all newborns less than 5,000 grams is a size 1. Choice of laryngoscope blade size is less exact and chosen on overall size and maturity of the baby. A one blade is for term, a zero blade for preterm, and a double zero blade is used for extremely preterm. Attach the blade by pulling down on the handle and then lifting up. Be sure to check the light to make sure that it is working before you use it. The depth of endotracheal tube insertion is the distance from the tip of the tube to the baby's upper lip. There are two methods to estimate this depth. The NRP program provides an initial insertion depth chart. Simply find the gestational age of the baby you are intubating and the depth in centimeters is given. Insertion depth is also estimated by the length between the nasal septum and the tragus of the outer ear plus one. To intubate, place the endoscope blade in the baby's mouth. Place under the tongue and lift up. Lift up in the direction of the handle and be careful not to rock back. When the blade gently lifts the epiglottis, you will be able to visualize the cords. Knowing your upper airway anatomy will guide you. Insert the endotracheal tube from the right corner of the mouth, so as not to obstruct your view until you are passing through the cords. Then hold the endotracheal tube against the baby's hard palate and remove the blade. To place an LMA, deflate the cuff around the mask and remove the syringe. Open the baby's mouth and press the tip against the hard palate. Advance the LMA inward with a circular motion. Stop advancing when you feel resistance. Then inflate the cuff to seal the mask over the airway. Initiate PPV and check for CO2 detection as you would for an endotracheal tube. All right, I'm going to go ahead and intubate. I'm putting the blade into the mouth and there are a lot of secretions. May I have suction please? Suction. All right. Please section now. Okay. Much better. Can I have some cricoid pressure? Yes. Holding cricoid. All right. I need an airway. I see vocal cords and we are through. Let's check with the CO2 detector. We've got big color change, mist in our tube, and good chest rise. Okay. Take over bag. Kelly, do you hear breath sounds? And if you could check for air of the stomach, please. Yes, breath sounds are equal. No air in the stomach. Okay, so let's recap. So we've successfully intubated this baby, and I see that our heart rate has come up some, but we need to go ahead and give um, 30 seconds of positive pressure ventilation through our alternate airway. Increase, Kelly, can you get ready to come to the head of the bed uh, for chest compressions? And Regine, I'd like for you to get I'll set up for uh, a UVC placement, please. The primary methods to confirm that the endotracheal tube is in the trachea is a rapidly increasing heart rate and the detection of exhaled carbon dioxide, CO2. Other signs will include equal breath sounds and chest rise during PPV. There should be decreased or no air entry over the stomach and little or no air leak from the mouth. You may also observe mist in the tube. So our heart rate is still not above 60 and I'm sure we are intubated and giving effective ventilation. I think we need to go ahead and start compressions. I'm going to go to 100%. Starting chest compressions at a 3 to 1 ratio. 1 and 2 and 3 and breathe. 1 and 2 and 3 and breathe. 1 and 2 Delinda, and 3 and breathe. can you let me know if it's been one minute one so we can do two, a heart rate three, check please? Three, I will. And, and two, also maybe three, after one to two minutes of one, chest compression, be prepared to switch with Kelly. 
Chest compressions will be done from the head of the baby. Place both thumbs over the lower third of the sternum. Press down to compress the sternum and chest wall one third of the anterior posterior diameter. Be sure to completely release pressure between compressions without lifting your thumbs off the chest wall. When starting compressions, you should turn up the oxygen to 100%. Compressions in neonates are always coordinated with ventilation. Compressions and ventilations are done in a 3 to 1 ratio every 2 seconds. This will equal 90 compressions and 30 ventilations every minute. Continue coordinated chest compressions for at least 60 seconds before pausing compressions to check the heart rate. 1, 2, 3, breathe. 2, 3, Jen, breathe. it's been a minute One, of chest two, compressions. Three, okay, breathe. let's pause chest compressions and continue ventilation. Okay, our heart rate is still less than 60. Let's please continue chest compressions. Delinda, will you please take over chest compressions? Yes, I will. Okay, Regine, could you come place the UBC, please? Breathe. One and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe.